Hello, here we are. We're going to get going with 2 Chronicles chapter 8. So here we go. At the end of 20 years, during which Solomon built the temple of the Lord and his own palace, Solomon rebuilt the villages that Hiram had given him and settled Israelites in them. Solomon then went to Hamath Zobah and captured it. He also built up Tadmor in the desert and all the store cities he had built in Hamath. He rebuilt Upper Beth Horon and Lower Beth Horon as fortified cities with walls and with gates and bars, as well as Balath and all his store cities and all the cities for his chariots and for his horses. Whatever he desired to build in Jerusalem, in Lebanon, and throughout all the territory, he ruled. There were still people left from the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. These people were not Israelites. Um, Solomon conscripted the descendants of all these people remaining in the land whom the Israelites had not destroyed to serve as slave labor as it is to this day. But Solomon did not make slaves of the Israelites for his work. They were his fighting men, commanders of his captains, and commanders of his chariots and charioteers. They were also King Solomon's chief officials, 250 officials supervising the men. Solomon brought Pharaoh's daughter up from the city of David to the palace he'd built for her, for he said, My wife must not live in the palace of David, king of Israel, because the places the ark of the Lord has entered are holy. On the altar of the Lord that he had built in front of the portico, Solomon sacrificed burnt offerings to the Lord according to the daily requirement for offerings commanded by Moses for the Sabbaths, the new moons, and the three annual festivals. The festival of unleavened bread, the festival of weeks, and the festival of tabernacles. In keeping with the ordinance of his father David, he appointed the divisions of the priests for their duties and the Levites to lead the praise and assist and to assist the priests according to each day's requirement. He also appointed the gatekeepers by divisions for the various gates because this was what David, the man of God, had ordered. They did not deviate from the king's commands to the priests or to the Levites in any matter, including that of the treasuries. All Solomon's work was carried out from the day of the foundation of the temple of from the day the foundation of the temple of the Lord was laid until its completion. So the temple of the Lord was finished. Then Solomon went to Ezion, Geber, and Elath on the coast of Edom, and Hiram sent him ships commanded by his own men, sailors who knew the sea. These, with Solomon's men, sailed to Ophir and brought back 450 talents of gold, which they delivered to King Solomon. Okay. Um, when the queen of Sheba heard of Solomon's fame, she came to Jerusalem to test him with hard questions. Arriving with a very great caravan with camels carrying spices, large quantities of gold and precious stones, she came to Solomon and talked with him about all she had on her mind. Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was too hard for him to explain to her. When the queen of Sheba saw the wisdom of Solomon as well as the palace he'd built, the food on his table, the seating of his officials, the attending servants in their robes, the cupbearers in their robes, and the burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord, she was overwhelmed. She said to the king, the report I heard in my own country about your achievements and your wisdom is true. But I didn't believe what they said until I came and saw with my own eyes. Indeed, not even half the greatness of your wisdom was told me, and you have far exceeded the report that I heard of your wisdom. Now, happy! how happy your people must be, how happy your officials who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. 
Praise be to the Lord your God who's delighted in you and placed you on his throne as king to rule for the Lord your God. Because of the love of your God for Israel and his desire to uphold them forever, he's made you king over them to maintain justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold, large quantities of spices and precious stones. There had never been such spices as those the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. You can only imagine because I believe she's from parts of Africa. The servants of Hiram and the servants of Solomon brought gold from Ophir, O-P-H-I-R. They also brought algam wood and precious stones. The king used the algam wood to make steps for the temple of the Lord and for the royal palace and to make harps and lyras for the musicians. Nothing like them had ever been seen in Judah. Now, King Solomon gave the queen of Sheba all she desired and asked for. He gave her more than she'd brought to him. Then she left and returned with her retinue to her own country. The weight of the gold that Solomon received yearly was 666 talents. I think that's an interesting number, don't you? Not including the revenues brought in by the merchants and the traders. Also, all the kings of Arabia and the governors of the territories brought gold and silver to Solomon. King Solomon made 200 large shields of hammered gold. 600 shekels of hammered gold went into each shield. He also made 300 small shields of hammered gold with 300 shekels of gold in each shield. The king put them in the palace of the forest of Lebanon. Remember that was the name of it? The palace of the forest of Lebanon. Then the king made a great throne covered with ivory and overlaid with pure gold. The throne had six steps and a footstool of gold was attached to it. On both sides of the seat were armrests with a lion standing beside each of them. Twelve lions stood on the six steps, one at either end of each step. Nothing like it had ever been made for any other kingdom. All King Solomon's goblets were gold, and all the household articles in the palace of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold. Nothing was made of silver because silver was considered of little value in Solomon's day. The king had a fleet of trading ships manned by Hiram's servants. Once every three years it returned carrying gold, silver, and ivory, and apes and baboons. King Solomon was greater in riches and wisdom than all the other kings of the earth. All the kings of the earth sought audience with Solomon to hear the wisdom God had put in his heart. Year after year, everyone who came brought a gift, articles of silver and gold and robes, weapons and spices and horses and mules. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for horses and chariots and 12,000 horses, which he kept in the chariot cities and also with him in Jerusalem. He ruled over all the kings from the Euphrates River to the land of the Philistines as far as the border of Egypt. Pardon me, I'm perspiring. Um, the king made silver. It's because it's been raining and it's very close in here. So please forgive me. I'm not trying to be gross by constantly wiping my face. Sorry. The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones and cedar as plentiful as sycamore fig trees in the foothills. Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and from all other countries. As for the other events of Solomon's reign from beginning to end, are they not written in the records of Nathan the prophet, in the prophecy of Ahijah the Shilonite, and in the visions of Iddo the seer concerning Jeroboam son of Nebat? Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel 40 years. Then he rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of his father and Rehoboam his son succeeded him as king. Rehoboam went to Shechem for all Israel had gone there to make him king. When Jeroboam son of Nebat heard this, he was in Egypt where he had fled from King Solomon, he returned from Egypt. So they sent for Jeroboam and he and all Israel went to Rehoboam and said to him, 
Your father put a heavy yoke on us, but now lighten the harsh labor and the heavy yoke he put on us, and we'll serve you. Rehoboam answered, come back to me in three days. So the people went away. The king Rehoboam consulted the elders who had served his father Solomon during his lifetime. How would you advise me to answer these people, he asked. They replied, if you will be kind to these people and please them and give them a favorable answer, they'll always be your servants. But Rehoboam rejected the advice the elders gave him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him and were serving him. He asked them, what's your advice? How should we answer these people who say to me, lighten the yoke your father put on us? The young men who had grown up with him replied, the people have said to you, your father put a heavy yoke on us, but make our yoke lighter. Now tell them, my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. My father laid on you a heavy yoke. I'll make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I'll scourge you with scorpions. Three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to Rehoboam, as the king had said. Come back to me in three days. The king answered them harshly, rejecting the advice of the elders. He followed the advice of the young men and said, My father made your yoke heavy. I'll make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I'll scourge you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people, for this turn of events was from God. To fulfill the word the Lord had spoken to Jeroboam, Jeroboam, son of Nebat, through Ahijah the Shilonite, when all Israel saw that the king refused to listen to them, they answered the king, What share do we have in David? What part in Jesse's son? To your tents, Israel. Look after your own house, David. So all the Israelites went home. But as for the Israelites who were living in the towns of Judah, Rehoboam still ruled over them. King Rehoboam sent out Adoniram, who was in charge of forced labor, but the Israelites stoned him to death. King Rehoboam, however, managed to get into his chariot and escape to Jerusalem. So Israel had been in rebellion against the house. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. Because remember, the house of David is Judah, which was all that was left to King Solomon. I love you very much, and I'll see you tomorrow. You have a wonderful evening. Treasure these things in your heart. Take what you can. Leave the rest. Apply them where they need to be. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.